Hi everybody, I'm back in the studio here getting a little bit more cleaning done. It looks a little bit better than it did the other day. My shelf looks pretty good. Got all my stuff up there. Still need, I still need a lot more stuff to do, but it's looking a lot better, a lot more manageable. I decided to take a break from cleaning so I could show you my airbrush setup that I have. Uh, my last show I I have a lot of masks up. I like to do mask masquerade masks and uh, I painted all the masks uh, with pastels and airbrush and this is the airbrush that I have and I actually have the box right over here still. I have a Iwata beginner. They have a professional set too but I got the beginner set. Uh, it's a really good set if you're interested in getting started in airbrushing and it comes, comes of course it comes with an airbrush, it even comes with a compressor and some of these other accessories too, like a book and came with a little thing of paint and cleaner and some stencils and uh, a couple of containers, pretty cool. And this is, this is the airbrush right here that it came with, it's a gravity, gravity feed dual action, it's a really good airbrush. The very first airbrush I ever used came from Harbor Freight, I wouldn't really recommend starting out that way even though it is really cheap it's just not a very good quality and it just yeah it's just not a great quality so this is a great quality the Harbor Freight one is like eh. the compressor was actually not bad so that was actually the first compressor I started out with and this one is the one that came with this I wanted to I want a ninja jet right there it's a pretty good compressor so all in all I've been pretty happy with you know how this has been working out. When I was painting those masks a few weeks ago, one thing I noticed has never happened before. I've used this airbrush several times, and one thing that happened was while I was trying to paint, every so often it would spit water, clean water out on the mask that I was trying to paint, and it was driving me crazy. And I couldn't understand why I was doing that because it's never done that before. And I was thinking, where is this clean, clear water coming from? Because I have paint in the pot. So I don't understand where this water is coming from. And after thinking about it, I was thinking, oh, well, it must be because of the humidity. You know, it's kind of raining outside, and it must be condensation in the compressor. And then it makes sense because this one does not come with a moisture trap. Now, the Harbor Freight compressor that I bought, you know, it came with a regulator. This one, all, this one does have a regulator. But that one did not have a moisture trap either, and I, I did end up buying one to, I was kind of playing around with accessories and everything, and I don't know, it just, it didn't occur to me. I, you know, I, I got this Iwata, I took it out of the box and just started using it. It's supposed to be a really good brand, and I didn't even think about that. So, uh, so I went down to Lowe's, and I got, I went down to their, uh, air tool section where they have all the compressors and, uh, die grinders and stuff and I got a moisture trap to put on here and so and I had to get other accessories like just just some moisture trap I, I didn't need just that I needed the little uh, adapters and stuff to be able to put it on there and so I have all the boxes I kept so I could show you guys exactly what I got first thing I reached for was the moisture filter and that's just this portion right here and so uh, the, all of this is Cobalt brand. That's Lowe's brand, and that's what everything is here. So that was the first thing. And then the second thing I was looking for was a an adapter for to be able to actually screw this in, because I, I, of course, going up there, I, I knew the orientation of this line right here. This is normally where you would go and you would screw your line in for your airbrush. It would be right there. Well, I can't get, I can't take this moisture trap and stick it in this way because, yeah, the air is going the right way, but all the moisture and everything is supposed to be collecting pretty much down at the bottom, and so it needs to be oriented this way. So I found this little 360 swivel connector right here. And so it basically connects on right here. One thing I realized when I got everything and I started putting all these things together, I actually did forget something. I, I always do this. I always forget something. So the 
way this connects in, like this, this little adapter down here, this is so that I can actually screw it, this line in here. Uh, this is a male-to-male -male coupling, and I needed to be able to screw it in here, I need a female-to-female -female coupling, and that's the one thing I didn't get. So that's what I need. I need to go back and get that. But this is pretty much the setup. You know, I had these are what I have is three parts. What you need is four parts. So I had the the filter, and then I had the uh, coupling that I had to get, and then the little swivel, 360 swivel right here. And so then I got to go back and get one more part, and I got to get the uh, female to female, so I can hook that all up. One other thing I wanted to get while I was there was I wanted to get some plumber's tape. If anybody watching this is unfamiliar with plumber's tape, it's it's you know, it's not tape as in it's not sticky, but it's like a really thin plastic. It's like a thread sealing tape. So when you go, like, I pretty much, like, I haven't put any plumber's tape on here yet. I just put this together so I could demonstrate this is how, it, how I'm going to end up putting this together. You basically take this tape and you wrap it around the threading right here. And then when you go and you screw it on, it creates a really tight seal. So when I have my compressor on and there's air flowing, there's no air leak. You'll you'll be able to hear the air leak. It'll be a hissing sound. So when you go and you hook it all together, you shouldn't hear that. Uh, one other thing I should point out about this compressor is that it doesn't it doesn't shut off. Like when you go and you plug it in, a lot of the compressors, a lot of other different compressors, especially like the Harbor Freight one. It has a certain amount of PSI that it builds up to, and once it builds up to that PSI, it automatically shuts off. Until when you go and you pull the trigger, and you, you know, you release that, uh, that buildup, and with the flow of air, it'll go ahead and kick back on. Even though you, you have the on switch on all the time, but it'll kick back on, and it'll go ahead and fill it right back up to it. This one doesn't do that. It just runs constantly, and so. Uh, if I go in and tape this up really good, then I shouldn't get any air leaks. So you'll also notice in your gun to your, your airbrush when you go to pull the trigger, there won't be as much air coming out too because it'll be all leaking out over here. So that's weather one. If you do have a compressor that normally shut, will kick on and off while it's building air, if it just keeps running and running, you've got an air leak. And so, yeah, this is what my setup is. Um, also, another rule whenever you're going to go and put, like if you, like if this didn't come with a regulator and I wanted to do a regulator and I wanted to do a moisture trap and if there's any other kinds of things you wanted to do and add on here, it needs to be at the lowest point on the line. So everything needs to be down here and not close up to where you actually hook your airbrush in there. For one, uh, it's not going to work as well and two, it's going to be all heavy and awkward and it's going to be in the way so everything just, everything needs to be down here and I think that's yeah that's pretty much it I just want to show you guys the setup um, it's raining even today like I don't plan and you know I'm not gonna fire up my airbrush today but I I plan to do it very soon and I really don't want this to be a hindrance in me being able to paint you know whether it's raining outside or not I don't want to have to just like oh I can't paint today because it's raining so this is what I decided to do uh, all in all, all these parts uh, cost me $23. I did get just a little bit of a discount because I'm a veteran and uh, Lowe's likes to give us a discount. So uh, I think without the discount, it's probably like, it's only, I only got a 10% discount. So it probably would have been, uh, I'd say $0.32, cents, $0.70, cents, $1.20. So yeah, just a couple dollars, not too bad. But this is what I got, and then I got to go back and get that. Uh, coupling and then I'll be ready to go so thanks and uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this bye